My name is Haley Carter and I'm doing my senior project on animal abuse and laws in Texas. Animal abuse is either deliberate abuse or simply failure to take care of an animal. What laws are in place to protect these animals? Are there enough laws? The interdisciplinary problem I'll be discussing in my presentation is that there is too much animal abuse happening and not enough people reporting it in order for it to stop. Two of my main resources that I will be using throughout this presentation are the Humane Society of the United States and the SPCA of Texas. The Humane Society of the United States is the nation's most effective animal protection organization. We and our affiliates provide hands-on care and services to more than 100,000 animals each year and we professionalize the field through education and training for local or organizations. The SPCA of Texas, on the other hand, is the leading animal welfare agency in North Texas with two shelters and three spay and neuter clinics located in Dallas and McKinney and serves as an active resource center providing an array of programs and services that bring people and animals together to enrich each other's lives. The main purpose of this presentation is to be able to be the voice for these animals that have no voice. Why aren't people reporting animal abuse? What, are these an what have these animals done to deserve this? There are so many unanswered questions that I would like to answer. I plan on investigating this topic through credible sources in real life scenarios. The credible sources I will be using will allow me to look into the actual laws that currently exist and the cases that have happened. I feel as though I can personally relate to this topic, not only because I'm an animal lover, but because I have dealt with animal abuse and I have been the one to help the animal even when it wasn't my responsibility. I would like to discuss a case that I researched and what the different components are. Shelter, so this is the first case. It was a shelter break-in. There were three animals killed, two escaped, and two injured, and it was on July 16th. It says, a shocking weekend attack at the New Braunfels Humane Society Animal Shelter left three animals dead. Sometime between 8 p.m. July 15th and 8.15 a.m. July 16th, the shelter was broken into and the interior was trashed. In addition to the three animals killed, two others were injured, and two apparently escaped. All the animals in the shelter were let out of their cages and were roaming the grounds contained by a perimeter fence. The vandals wrote on the walls and splashed a liquid on them. About, about 5,000 pounds of pet food and 1,200 pounds of cat box filler were contaminated with the liquid and had to be thrown away. Crime Stoppers offered up a $1,000 re reward for information leading to an arrest or um, an indictment. A local resident also offered to add another $1,000 more to the reward. To help the investigation, call it says to call Kamal County Crime Stoppers. And um, to add money to the reward, you can also call the Crime Stoppers board member, Teresa. As hard as this might be to read, these cases um, are so very important, have some very important components to look at. First would be how descriptive the case is. The case shows between what days and what time the attacks occurred. The second component to look at is the reward of $1,000 the Crime Stoppers are offering. Now this is pretty common for the rewards to be given out by local authorities, but what's interesting about this case is that a local res a local resident also offered up a thousand dollar reward as well. Yantis Green, the author of Animal Cruelty Laws Strengthened by New State Law, states penalties for certain types of violent offenses such as torturing, cruelly killing, poisoning, or causing serious bodily injury to an animal will now increase to a third-degree felony punishable by two to ten-year prison sentence. Until now, an abuser could receive a sentence as, a sentence as little as 180 days 
um, for dousing a dog with accelerant and setting it on fire, an all too common form of abuse that has been seen in cities like Dallas, Amarillo, Corpus Christi, and others. The perspective of Yantis Green shows that there are new laws that are coming about to help better protect these animals. Yantis Green used the disciplinary perspective of finding actual facts on law in Texas. Michigan State University Animal Legal and Historical Center provides information regarding the punishment of different types of animal abuse in Texas. It says, oftentimes animal cruelty cases are not reported nor are they prosecuted. However, if a person is prosecuted and found guilty of animal cruelty, Texas law imposes different punishments based on the type of cruel action involved, whether the conviction was one of the many offenses or whether the defendant involved is a minor. If a minor has engaged in a delinquent conduct con constituting an offense under section 42.09, the juvenile court shall order the child to participate in psychological counseling for a period to be determined by the court. The law is pertaining to minors involved in animal cruelty conduct was only recently added in 2001. For cruelty convictions involving depriving an animal of food or water, abandoning an animal, transporting an animal in a cruel manner, injuring someone else's animal, <coughs> or overworking an animal, the defendant will be punished by a Class A misdemeanor, which may include a fine up to $4,000, jail time up to a year, or both. <coughs> Excuse me. If the conviction is a third offense involve, in, involving these actions, the state may punish the defendant with a state jail felony. Under Texas law, a state jail felony may include jail time ranging from 180 days to two years and up to a fine of $10,000. Some cruel action warrant harsh uh, some cruel actions warrant harsher punishments even on the first conviction. For cruelty offenses involving the torture, killing, seriously injured, poisoning, fighting, or tripping of an animal, a state jail felony may be imposed on the first conviction. If a defendant is convicted three times under these harsher, pe harsher penalties, he may be subject to a third degree felony sentence, which translates to imprisonment ranging two to 10 years and possible fine up to $10,000. <coughs> While the crim criminal cruelty status enumerates the potential punishments for each type of conviction, in practice, the courts impose a wide uh, variance of punishments and sentences. More often than not, jail time is replaced with community service hours or probation. Additionally, fines imposed by the courts rarely reach the maximum amount. Critics blame the phenomenon of a combination of factors the reluctance of the public to report animal cruelty situations, the court's unwillingness to take animal cruelty cases seriously, procedural errors, and the effect of prosecu po prosecutorial disurrection on whether charges will be filed and maximum punishment sought. Lastly, if the owner of an animal is found guilty of an offense under Section 4209, the courts may order that the animals be removed from the, or from the owner's possession. This civil remedy is detailed in the next section explaining the civil statutes and their seizures and forfeiture pro provisions. <coughs> <coughs> Susan Hightower <coughs> is the author of The Recent Evolution of Texas Animal Law. She states, just five years ago, laws aimed at combating animal cruelty in Texas were considered so weak that the Animal Legal Defense Fund ranked Texas among a handful of the best states in which to be an animal abuser. Dramatic change has since helped ease that distinction. During the past three legislative sessions, Texas lawmakers have passed bills intended to tackle some of the worst forms of cruelty inflicted against animals particularly companion animals, but new legislation affecting the animals of Texas is not limited to laws against animal abuse. 
I just discussed three different people's perspective on animal abuse and the laws in Texas. Yantis Green dis discussed an actual case with facts and rewards. Michigan State University Animals Legal and Historical Center talks about the different punishments someone will receive for different types of animal cruelty. And lastly, Susan Hightower, the author of the recent Evolution of Texas Animal Law, the History of Animal Abuse Laws, but also states that our laws are changing and now are more protect have more protection for the animals. The common problem between all of these perspectives is that even though our laws are changing and the laws regarding animal abuse in Texas are becoming stronger, there are still so many animals suffering and not enough laws to protect. Um, during my research, I have read that not only are there enough laws in Texas to protect animals, there are too many animal abuse cases going unreported. People are sometimes afraid of reporting animal abuse, especially if the abuser finds out who reported him or her. Or there might not be enough information out there for people to know who to call if they see animal abuse. Obviously, seeing an animal being hit, kicked, or physically injured is a sure sign of animal abuse. That said, most cases of abuse are forms of neglect that are harder to see. Since most criminals aren't going to physically abuse animals out in the open, you're going to have to keep an eyes, your eyes peeled for some time to spot any neglect that's happening behind the scenes. If you notice that animals are left alone for long periods of time without proper care, for example, they are severely underweight or overweight, they have no access to food or water or shelter or are living in a piling up feces and urine, chances are they're being heavily neg neglected. Animal hoarding is another form of neglect and you might see the same signs mentioned, but likely with many more animals involved. A lack of veterinary care is also animal cruelty. Animals should not be left to die. It's understood that veterinary care can be expensive, but there are many more options than refusing to treat a pet and leaving them to suffer until they finally pass, a pass away. If you witness animal cruelty in person, calling the police is your best bet. Animal abuse is a crime, and reporting it as it's happening is the best method of action. Do not step in and try to handle the situation yourself, because you may be putting yourself at risk for injury or death. Remember, these people are criminals, and if they have no problem harming an animal, they will have no problem harming you. The best way to stop abuse is to call the police immediately. Give them as much information as possible so that the abuser can still be found and he or she should if he or she should manage to leave the scene. Your local animal shelter or even a veterinarian can help you direct you to the appropriate organizations to contact if you don't know where to start. Even if you don't witness any abuse firsthand, suspected animal abuse should be re reported. Not all animal abuse is immediate and serious neglect can result in death of an innocent animal. Letting your local SPCA know as much information as possible could save the lives of animals involved. Remember that most people aren't going to abuse animals in public, so if you notice small signs, it's likely that something more serious is going on. Whether you're contacting the police or your local SPCA, you'll want to provide as much information as possible. Even if you are watching what you think is abuse for a few days or months, take notes. Identify what you think are the issues, neglect animal fighting, physical abuse, and use as much detail as possible. Keep written logs of dates and times you've spoken to authorities, to the, pe to the pet owners if you have done so, and anyone else you can bear witness to the investigation. I would like to review some of the material that I have already discussed. Animal abuse is either deliberate abuse or simply fail, uh, failure to take care of an animal. The main interdisciplinary problem is that there aren't enough animal abuse laws in Texas protecting these animals. Misty Wood and Hogan from Change.org discusses exactly what needs to change in order to help these animals. That She says, the main change needs to be removal of the previous captured clause from this law. This would allow for the prosecution of anyone being cruel to any and all animals. The second change needs to be that the prosecutors to petition the courts to impose the maximum fines and penalties on the guilty parties and for the judge to listen to the prosecutors and impose the request, requested maximum fines and penalties. By actual enforcement of the laws that are on the books and making these proposed changes, Texas would have laws with enough teeth and debtor to, debtor de to deter any and all potential animal cruelty 
per perpetrators from acting on their urges and to be cruel to animals. We will never know why people abuse animals, but it that but that isn't what the paper is discussing. I want to be the voice for these animals that don't have one or are in horrible abuse situations. It is a fact that we aren't able to see every single animal abuse situation. It's just not possible. What we can do is make sure that people know what the signs are of animal abuse, who to call, how to, and how to approach this situation. I truly think that most people care about animals enough not to hurt them, even if they don't particularly like them. Some people may just say to themselves, don't look or there's nothing I can do about it. And because of that, animals will suffer. You can do something. Be their voice. I would like to end this uh, presentation with a poem by Lauren Roller. If you look for a reoccurring phrase, it's asking someone to speak up. She says, I haven't seen anyone for days. My bones ache for attention as I see you walk away. It didn't used to be that way. I guess I got to be too much to handle. As I now sit alone in my deserted land, I have no voice of my own. I need you to, you to speak for me. The days are long as I waste away. Nowhere to go, I pull at the chains. Welts on my neck, blood, misery, and pain. Can anyone speak for me? As hunger rots my core, I wonder where you are and why you have left me here to suffer. What agony did I cause to deserve this punishment? Can anyone speak for me? Do you even re remember my name when your pellet silenced my howling cries in the night? With not even a grassy patch to rest my weary head upon, dirt is all that remains from my constant pacing. Can someone speak for me? I lay here dying and uninvolved. As I, I, as I am being tossed away with the banana peels and the other glutinous garbage, I needed you to speak for me. And that is the end of my presentation. So thank you for listening.